So let's go. I think it's time now, speaking to the audience, I think it's time to move into the Q&A section, if you don't mind, Tom. Let's, let's do it. Let's. I'm going to turn on, let me see how I do this. I can turn on comments for you. There's not too many comments right now, so we can probably, I'm just going to go through them and, and, and we'll talk about it. I can pull them up on the screen and stuff too. Let's see. Oh, let's go back to the beginning. Oh, JT Gamer says, hi. Yeah. Hi, JT. Uh, hi. Regan Clem, retailer extraordinaire, says, Dan, I never noticed the motion in your pig logo at the intro. That's nice. Thanks, Regan. Uh, I paid money for that. Uh, I, I, I got it. Uh, uh, someone in the Philippines did it for me at a, at a very reasonable price, high quality. Can't recommend them enough. Um, I'll try to get a link down there to them. Cool. Uh, Coffee Breath. Oh, man. Coffee Breath is one of our uh, supporters. He's a, he's a, um, a bronze level supporter. He pays. The avatar. The, the uh, Doctor Doom. It looks like a Kirby Doctor Doom, for, from what I can tell. It's got some of the you know quirks of, of the Kirby Doctor Doom, where the the mask can actually emote. Amazing how that works. How like in the right circumstance, Iron Man's mask and like, and it just worked. You never really yeah. questioned it too much, Part right? Yeah. So much better actually than if they hadn't done it where it didn't emote. It would just look stiff and it would be wrong, right? It would feel right. wrong in comics context. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, fellow Pittsburghian, Heronburg. It was the Pittsburgh. I think it was the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts. That that makes. What sense. was I referring to? Where you taught? Because that... I was saying that I, I was teaching classes for a while, um, and I, I I believe it was uh, at the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts. Um. Let's see. Uh, Regan Clum. I love this idea. I'm not sure which one he's talking about. That was a long time ago. Flux Core says. Yeah, hire that John Malin guy to do your fulfillment. He works cheap unless you want him to draw. Ever thought about fulfillment? Like, that's the thing. There's a bunch of companies now that just will do all that stuff that you <laughs> talked about, but it cuts into your profit margins yeah. and everything else, right? Yeah. So, open to, I mean, I, I have had like serious conversations with people who have done, you know, Kickstarters and done successful, you know, crowdfunding and stuff. So, and like, yeah, that, that seems like a very, you know, viable option and a doable option. Yeah. Okay. Oh, coffee breath. Back with another comment. Love that GoBots run. Yeah, we didn't really talk about GoBots too much, but like that was like, um, you know, like I, I really, uh, it, it, it was a project that I was like really excited about and, and um, did um, get to like, you know, kind of do, like I, I spent a couple years doing the Transformers G.I. Joe thing. And then when you work on something like that, by the end of it, you have like a million ideas. Like you've kind of, uh, gotten really good at telling transforming robot stories and it's kind of like oh you know where else can i apply the, this uh you know a uh, body of of knowledge that i've acquired and then and then it's like okay go bots and, and then um you could just be like that much more free with some, like they, they do you find one more creatively like fulfilling or like less restrictions on GoBots because there's less canon or whatever i mean GoBots, i was really um like i created from from like the ground up like with with Transformers and GI Joe, I knew that there was that like huge following and 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 the, the mythologies and like the mythologies like were they did have something to offer. So I felt like yeah, I have to do due diligence and study this stuff. And and even if I'm gonna disregard pieces of, I need to understand it. Where with Gobots, I was like, no, like I know everything I need to know about Gobots. Like I'm gonna like I don't I don't want to delve into the the mythology. Like, right recreate this thing from the ground up and and do it like my way like it, it and it was like okay i did transformers and i did this way this way and that and i did this 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 and this what if instead of doing you know a b c what if i did you know z x y you know like i, I was able to like take all the different decisions i made in transformers and see what happens uh, oh oh happen you know and and it was kind really, of a counterpoint counter yeah, counterpoint kind of like you know what like i went this way what if i would have gone that, that way and so it was you know really really amazing like really just like a really fun fun period and and it was kind of like the perfect length too because I, I i did um i think i did five issues and it was like yeah i like got in got out like like it, you know i was able to make like a substantial body of work but also not get like buried under it Tell me a bit. I haven't, I don't like, I'm not, 
I don't read licensed comics too much. You know what I mean? Like, that's not my thing. You really make me want to go out and read the G.I. Joe Transformers that you did and this go box. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand your reasons for not uh, wanting to, to read licensed comics, but but uh, my licensed comics, on the other hand, are something. Totally. That, like, I, I mean, I highly read, like, they're as personal or more personal than my creator own stuff. Like, I like I, I went for broke. Huh. Like, I, huh. I, I, I was like, guns blazing like like fully committed and and uh just you know and not, out of that stuff and not to mention man there've been some pretty darn good licensed comics i mean not many not enough people i think talk about it, and i never really truly recognized that both transformers and gi joe are really like marvel creations like like they yeah. they really have so yeah. much to do with the tv yeah. show and the comics and the synergy between them like jim shooter and yeah i Matt i threw i put like the G.I. Joe, like the, the Larry Hama G.I. Joe comics up against anything that came out of Marvel. Like it, it it's yeah, like, high quality stuff. Like, you know, the X-Men or whatever, as far as I'm concerned, it's this right like, down to great covers and everything yeah. else. Just like a beautiful comics package. Every issue of G.I. Joe looked really sharp. Um, okay. Hey, oh, my, my favorite comment of the night. Can you guys see my comments in this chat? I think I'm shadow banned on YouTube. <laughs> no. The answer is no, we can't see them. You are shadow banned. Sorry. No, Coffee Breath says you're good. We can see it. Um, nice interview. Tom, do you know if the book will be available on Amazon International? Yeah. I mean, Vicman I, de Santiago. I, I'm not sure exactly like the difference between Amazon and Amazon International, but like, yeah, this is like, this is like a pretty widely available book. And, and I imagine like, you know, translations are forthcoming and so they're like, yeah, like I, I don't I don't see any like the only thing I could think of is just time. Like it might it might it might take a little, you know, but yeah, as far as I know, sure. TJF says if the art is done in a vector program, it has the added advantage of being able to be enlarged to a very large scale. That's that's just undeniable. Yeah, I've worked in vector like uh you know in in uh sort of a previous life like i've i've, I've worked in vector pro you know I'm, I'm aware of the, the you know the the advantages of vector uh yeah, just like you know to me the, the way i'm working now is just you know has every advantage in the world right what's your vector victor all right uh justin rogers says that's a ff grand design was great need to get that collected edition can you pull that up one more time you got a handy i want i want to iso you so we can see that Wait a minute. Let me pull this down. There's Sue, and 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 now you see her. Now you don't. So that's a practical use of spot varnish. Yes, the the best use of, of spot varnish in, in the history of print. Um, and yet, like this is all my life. Ever since I read that um, Thor, uh, Mangog Treasury Edition, this is how I wanted my comics to be. I wanted them to be Treasury Edition. I wanted them to be this size and this shape. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And this is this is the the first oh. and so far only instance of, of my my of a comic that I, I made being uh, in this in this format and and it was it was like between me Ed and and Jim it was almost like this running kind of like joke and like and almost like competition of like which one of us is going to get a Treasury edition first right and the race was on and and it lasted a while and and Ed won. Um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, X-Men grand design. Yeah. He, he won, he got there or, or, or even prior to that, um, uh, hip hop family tree, hip hop family tree. That's what I was going to say. It seemed to me like that's what, yeah, I, I, I didn't put together the connection to Marvel treasury editions in that format. To me, it was like, Oh, this looks like hip hop family tree format. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, which large, like, you know, Marvel hadn't done a treasury in forever. And then, uh, yeah, the, the, the grand design format is, that like you know that's courtesy of Ed. Like he brought back the treasury. I love it. I I didn't put it together. Beyond like like now Marvel's do, doing the the uh, the hip hop family tree format for all kinds of stuff, not just grand designs, uh, but like for all kinds of stuff. I think it's cool. I think we're in for a brave new world of formats between that and the new black label stuff from DC. If they continue that stuff, that is. Yeah. Okay. DC, question mark right now. You know. What's, what's going to happen? Okay. Oh, comic book news with Dan Sheen. Hey, has Tom ever heard the Norm Macdonald Fantastic Four bit about the team being upset with Reed's name choice? Yeah. The names are 
collect their powers and he names himself Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, why not Stretcho? Yeah, love, love, I love that Norm McDonald bit. It's it's hilarious and and spot on and and yeah, like I I cracked up the first time I heard it and yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, because it is like it's like, hey, I, I turn into fire, I'm the human torch. I, you know, like, well, I stretch. Oh, what are you gonna call yourself? Stretch? No, I'm Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> call the team the fantastic like the ego of this guy. Well, and you just know. It's not portrayed much in the comics, but you just know Reed Richards has a humongous ego. He's got, he just does. Oh, I think it is. I mean, I think it's up front in the comics. Like I, th I think, yeah. I, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, Reed Richards can be unbearable at times. Right. Uh, that's true. Hucks all the air out of the room sometimes. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Generally, uh, Irwin Papa says, generally, how much time is spent on your layout process? I tend to get overwhelmed with how to portray an effective visual. So many tweaks, especially when you're digital, too. You got unlimited undos, and you can try a hundred different things. So are you paralyzed by the unlimited choices sometimes? Sometimes, yes. Uh, I mean, that that was more of an issue just at the very beginning, like when I was first trying to just be an artist in general, it was like, oh man, what, like, where do you even start? And then you kind of build up this, uh, you know, muscle memory and rep, you build up reps and stuff. And then those decisions just get easier. And you do just get to a point where you're just kind of guided by, by your like creative instinct, but it is the result of like all those years of, of agonizing over it. Like the agonizing over it is, is the learning process. And then that just gets, you know, integrated. So how many layouts, like, do you work like a page at a time where you do layout, you go all the way through to finished, or do you do like a bunch of layouts and then do your finishes? How, how, how do you, how do you I, pace it? But so, yeah, sometimes I just get really inspired and just do like, you know, a bunch of layouts, like one after, you know, real quick. And yeah, then right. Come back to it and, and do like a number of, you know, uh, you know, refinements and, 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 uh -huh. and but, but then, um, like what I've been tending to do is just kind of taking it a page at a time or, or two pages at a time and just, you know, do, doing it. Uh, yeah. Usually it's like, like, it's like maybe half or, or like a third of my working day on a, like, I'll do like a page a day and it'll be like a third to, to half the day is, is that, is that. And then, you know, the rest of the day is everything else. I feel like anything less than a page a day, like, just the old school cartoonists would be like, you're not a cartoonist kid. Like if you yes. can't do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, like, what are you doing with your life? You know, like, like how long <laughs> do you wait for to get 20 pages done? All right. Which is your favorite run of those licensed comics? I'm going to guess you just said go bots, but then you well, talked about how great GI Joe transformers was. So what's yeah, your I favorite? Mean, I, the, like, I, I, I mean, I guess we could interpret the question. However, once does he mean like, like my favorite run of like other people's or uh, oh no it says in those in those um, i'm gonna be yeah, like, here. i mean for me like you know I, I love all my babies or whatever you know like you know and they all have things to recommend them. it's just uh talking about like the enjoyment that you get as a creator um there's like nothing to compare to the um like ecstatic uh feeling that I had working on Transformers and GI Joe. Like it was this like extended period of just like, um, it just felt great. Like it, it just felt amazing for me. So like whatever, you know, whatever the resulting comics are, that's up, up to you. Like I've heard, you know, I, I tend to hear from people that they really like Transformers versus GI Joe, but I do hear from some people that are like, oh, you know, that was good, but I really like, I like GoBots even more. So I have heard that, but like, just, uh, and so, so maybe one's better than like, maybe, maybe something we're not even talking about is like, yeah, right. That'd be a hard one for me too. Yeah. yeah. The difference between those, like the fact, like you said, that one is just sort of, you got licensed to go wherever you want. And the other one, you sort of a little more canon bound, I guess. You, you could be miserable working on something that ends up being like a phenomenal work of art and you could be like super happy working on something that, that doesn't, you know, but, but, yeah. but I was, uh, so over the moon happy in those years that I worked on Transformers versus GI Joe. And, um, and I, I, I think the end product is, is, is really great too. So that, that I I'd probably say that out of all, all the lights, okay. it, like, it was the first time too. Like you, you can't beat the first time. Like it's, it, you know, uh, 
like amazing. Well, and well, but leftover Zaggy says make more GoBots, dude. Way fun to read. Yeah, the GoBot. I mean, the GoBots was uh, like like I really made them my own. Like, it, and it and it like I pitched a story of what my GoBots run was going to be, and IDW approved it. And then, just as I was about to start like really working on it, a totally different idea came to me that was like just so far and away like better in my opinion than what I you know pitched and approved. And I was kind of like, I, I explained that to, to my editor and I said, like, I want to just do this other thing. That's, that's nothing like what we talked about. Um, I want to do it. And, and I'd like to just start doing it, like not like repitch it or and just start doing it. And if it's, if it's a catastrophe, I'll stop and, and I'll go back and do the original and, and we'll be on, on schedule. But let me do, and, and I did this like new idea and that's what, that's what GoBots is. It was, it, it, oh, okay. You know, sometimes like you just have to be open to that kind of stuff you have to be open because sometimes um you know inspiration is going to drop in your lap and it's going to throw all your best laid plans completely out of whack and but you have to do it you have like like it's it's the right idea comes at the right time so. yeah i like it you took a creative risk but it was kind of a financial risk too if you didn't know it was going to be sold right but then yes i i i, I think like i'm i, I can be reckless uh, sometimes, uh, and, and I think that is an, like, I think that works to my benefit creatively. I, th I think, um, my work can be very compelling because I'm willing to risk, uh, ruin, um, because my, my inspiration. Do you have kids? Do you have kids, Tom? Are you married? Do you have kids? I, I, I am married and, and, and have kids. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of that recklessness was, was sort of before, but, it's like I sit like I just kind of sometimes have that like that attitude like like in in uh, in creative things like of just like just do it just like just you know go for yeah. it like like things will work out like I, I like I don't I don't see any other way like I like I don't see any other way to like to, to make these things. and and that's that's like the business we're in like we're like we're making dreams and stuff and you just you gotta like there's there's no reason not to go for like the risk is ultimately still very small because we are only talking about uh you know paper and pencils and and thing and and again i'm i'm willing you know if, ah but there's time tom and there's I, opportunity I, cost you, you got to put time into into everything you know? yeah it's the one thing you're not going to get back they'll recycle the paper but you ain't getting that time back we got one more comment here just a little bit of a challenge to you tom what what are you why no inks Mr. Seal, what are you too good for ink? I, I am. I I I, I did my <laughs> time with ink. I, I I I logged a lot of ink mileage. And um, you know, it's a beautiful tradition. You know, I love ink. It's but it, it's um, You got any? You keep uh, it around the house still? You look yeah, at the, the bottle longingly I, occasionally? Yeah, there's ink. I just um I just see it as for me, uh completely unnecessary, gets in the way. The pencil is just a much more direct way of communicating, and mm -hmm. I love the way it looks. I think it looks better. Uh, I love it. I think it, I think I'm, I, wow. I love with the pencil. The pencil is this amazing thing, and and there were all these reasons why you couldn't just reproduce a pencil back right. in the 30s, 40s, 50s, yep. 70s, 80s, 90s. But with with digital production, there. I mean, there. You know, the pencil it looks great. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing, t it, you can create a very clear, readable line that has this randomness as, as the uh -huh. graphite explodes and pops and sprays in different directions. Get, it has this yeah. quality, like a little tiny uh, airbrush. It's so interesting when you think about art and how like you think about precise and tight control when you, or I do, when I think about it, I just think about like you have control over every line. But in reality, it's those who know how to get the spontaneity of the line, right? And like that just comes from just, again, it's those neurons and the nerves and it's just a physical thing, right? I mean, it's not something you can, like when you look at a Bill Watterson or something like that, right? You look at the inks on there and like I would try as a kid, I'm like, why can't I make my lines look, you know? I didn't realize he's using a brush and he's got yeah. such fine control over that, over that stuff. 
What about brushes and, and ink work, yeah. Tom? It's not, I mean, I, I mean, again, you, and when we talk about like the eight opus stuff, that was brush. And yes. Ink, and it was, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it at that particular time. And, and I, I liked the way it looked, uh, but it's just like, like the pencil, the pencil's just, just better. And, and, you know, they, I sort of, uh, you know, transitioned out of, because they, they stopped making, uh, they stopped making the brushes that I like, um, I would use the series seven Windsor new of course. Yeah. Uh, brushes and you'd get this amazing, whoosh, this like amazing snap and this, uh, this amazing line. And, um, there was like sort of a generation of, of, um, craftsmen who had been making them. And then they all like retired, died and, and you know, and, and there was just this new generation or, or new process that just wasn't producing those same. Yeah. Things. So I've been hearing that a lot from my wife, who's an artist, about the quality of brushes going down. Peter Bag last week. Let me just name drop other guests. Peter Bag and Noah Van Skyver were talking about that last week. That just like even even down to erasers and graphite quality, it's just it seems to have been a like a degradation in that quality. Mm -hmm. but well, man, that happens. the pen you can find a good pencil anywhere. Yeah, I still get a good number two, right? What do you? What kind of pencil do you use? I mean, I use like those mechanical, like, those little clicky like Bic, yeah. like the kind you would have in seventh grade. Like I, uh huh. I, um, hard, hard. Let's get into how, what about the leads? Be like regular number two lead. Yeah. And uh, and so. You're just a no ink kind of guy now. You don't see yourself going back to that, though. No, I hate it. Um, and uh, it stinks. Like, I, yeah, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> and I turned, like, I, I, I did a job, and I did it, and then they insisted that I use ink, and so then I did, and I did not like the result. And and uh, on which book? I'm sorry, on which one? Oh, I, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. Oh, okay. It. And it has, uh, and. I did. I didn't like that, and then I got offered like a pretty cool job, which I'm also not going to say. But um, they, they and I said, well, okay, but I I just need to know, like I I need to do this in pencil. Is that a problem? They said, oh yeah, like we it's part of this format. We want it to be in ink. It has to be in ink. Blah blah blah. And I, I said, well then then no thank you. Like I can't, I can't do that. Wow. So yeah, it's it's ink is. I mean, maybe maybe tomorrow I'll wake up and be like ink ink ink, but. But for now, it's like, no, I, 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 I have no use for this stuff. For now, ink stinks. All right, Tom. You know, but what's great is, dude, I, I love the story of your career that we went through tonight. Dude, I, it just shows me somebody who's just scrappy, who's doing what it takes. You have that old school, hardworking cartoonist mentality, I think. And I see it in you and I see it in, in, in Ed and Jim too, that like you guys are laying it like as a profession and as a career, as well as an art form, like it's the, where those two things collide. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Pittsburgh. Like, like we'd be working in a steel mill in, in, a, in right. another lifetime. They don't work in steel mills anymore. Everyone works in hospitals now, right? In Pittsburgh, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's all medical. Yeah. There's one steel mill left. Well, Tom, and it might be that way with comic book stores soon. Who knows? There might only be one publisher left soon. DC Comics, who knows, might be gone soon enough. Here's my hopeful prediction. If DC goes, out, let me bring up my prediction. And you can make a prediction. I didn't tell you this, but let's, I want you to make a prediction. Wow. I always ask for my prediction is DC will stop publishing comics, will license their comics out. Disney will scoop up the license, and we will get to see that Ragnarok meets new gods team up will get done uh and they're gonna bring in tom scioli to to do the pencils of course that's my prediction of yeah, course i like that i like that part of the prediction i, I mean uh you know D disney owns marvel so i i thought by now um we'd see like captain america throwing his shield at darth vader and then it kind of like stops uh -huh. him midair or whatever like i thought we would have seen that by now um it's it's inevitable it's, it's give it time yeah give it time yeah so i mean that i guess that's a prediction yeah like i, I just okay I, I like that one that's specific yes <laughs> and actionable and when it happens we're, we we say tom's a genius it might be the end credits of you know the first sort of like post 
a quarantine, uh, you know, yes. it might be the end at the, Oh, to get everybody back, right? To be like, you got to come to the theaters for this because we're not streaming this thing. Yeah, I love it. That desperate. Okay. Pull out all this stuff. Tom, speaking of post credits sequences, I don't know if you know this. We got credits at the end and we put people's names up. And sometimes there's even a post credit cameo. And I got one today that is directly related to your book. Okay. So I hope you can stick around. If you got a minute, I'll put you backstage. I got to wrap this thing up. I'm going to play the credits. And then if you got time to chat for a few minutes afterwards, if, if it's too late, I understand. No, but if you do, I'm all charged up. So, you know, I'm Ooh, all right. Let's. Time soon. Great. Th Dom, thanks again. Um, I'll talk to you soon.